Hi, I'm Dr. Blair Masters, and I wanted to talk about vitamin D, and specifically in this video as it relates to COVID, but this relates to all kinds of infections that you can get. And coming around to this time of year, it is important that we maintain our vitamin D levels. You'll see why here in a second. Um, this was a study in, published in Feb's journal, uh, reference right there, low vitamin D levels in the blood significantly increased hospitalization rates in those infected with COVID-19. So if you're low on vitamin D, you're more likely to end up in the hospital if you have COVID. Um, broad meta-analysis, and this was published in the Univer um, European Journal of Endocrinology. Meta-analysis, what is that? That's when a bunch of researchers compile information from a number of different research studies. So they're trying to like draw conclusions based on a broad number of studies. So I like meta-analysis quite a bit. They're, they're very good. Um, anyway, shows significant link between higher vitamin D levels and reduced COVID susceptibility and severity. So if you're higher in vitamin D, you're less likely to get it. And if you do get it, it's going to be less severe. Let's keep going. Endocrine and metabolic aspects of COVID pandemic. Um, this is the link. I'm quoting them. We strongly recommend to maintain vitamin D treatment in those already diagnosed with hyper, hypovitaminosis D, in other words, low vitamin D levels in the blood, and suggest considering supplementation with vitamin D for elderly comorbid persons at home confinement if they're not already under supplementation. Now, why wait? I don't want to wait to supplement with vitamin D until I'm elderly and stuck in my house. I'd rather do it ahead of time and head off any problems that I might have. Um, let's keep going here. Um, this is a quote from Rose Ann Kinney. People should be taking vitamin D anyway. I'll talk about this. Um, she's with the Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. And she led a cross-sectional study into the mortality and death rates and vitamin D status and is the lead investigator in the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging. We'll talk about why that's important here in a second. She is adamant, they say in the study, this is a quote directly from the study, adamant that the recommendations from all public health bodies should be for the population to take vitamin D supplements during this pandemic. And... Why is she adamant about this? And we haven't, we don't hear anything about this in the United States. Our public health officials had never even ven mentioned vitamin D. As a matter of fact, I was t telling my patients to um, take vitamin D when the pandemic first started. And my board said, cut that out. Don't be telling people that because we don't know what this, this pandemic's all about. Anyway, why does it matter? In Ireland, there is... The government's on the line for your health care. They take care of health care. And I'm not saying that's a great system or a good system or a bad system or anything like that, but they have a financial interest in their population staying healthy. And they recommend taking vitamin D on a regular basis. Um, our government doesn't have a uh, vested interest in us staying healthy. And in some ways, I think they have a vested interest in us getting sick and, and purchasing more drugs. But anyway, that's, that's another story. Let's continue quoting here. The circumstantial evidence is very strong. She proclaimed, we don't have randomized controlled evidence. Randomized controlled studies are the gold standard for research studies. They don't have that, although it would be fairly easy to do. But how long do you want to wait in the context of such a crisis? She's saying, why wait? The chances for vitamin D overdose are very, very low. Most people are very, very low in their blood with the vitamin D levels. And the consequences of having low vitamin D levels are, are fairly severe. They really are. So there's, and it's cheap as dirt. There is no reason to wait to take supplement with vitamin D. Another study, this was fascinating, in the Journal of Endocrinology. Um, basically, let me bottom line this one for you. 60 plus percent of those infected with COVID in hospitals had low vitamin D levels. So if you're low in vitamin D, you're more likely to end up in the hospital. And then 81% of intensive care units, people in intensive care were low on vitamin D. So the lower your vitamin D level, the more likely you are to end up in intensive care. So, supplementing with vitamin D is really, really important. 
Vitamin D insufficiency prevalent in severe COVID. Uh, again, here's the reference. They had, this is a very small study, but interesting. 20 COVID patients with serum vitamin D levels were identified. 65% required ICU admission. The, this is vitamin D insufficiency. They call it VDI. The VDI prevalence in ICU patients was 84% versus 57% of floor patients. In other words, if you ended up in the ICU, it was 84% chance you were low on vitamin D. If you were not in the ICU, but just in the hospital, 57% chance you were strong, low on vitamin D. This uh, study again said, quote, strikingly, 100% of ICU patients less than 75 years old, so younger ICU patients, had low vitamin D levels or vitamin D insufficiency. This one is interesting too. Coagulopathy, in other words, problems with blood clotting, which is a major deal and, and can be life-threatening, was present in 62% of ICU COVID patients and 92% had lymphocytopenia or lymphocytopenic problems. Um, in other words, that means they don't have lymphocytes in their blood as much as they should. Lymphocytes are white blood cells that fight COVID. So when you're low on vitamin D, you're gonna have problems with your blood clotting and problems with um, lymphocytes or your white blood cells being able to fight stuff off is basically kind of the conclusion of this study. So what should you do about it? get tested for your vitamin D. Get a blood test. They're not that expensive and it can give you great insights as to where you stand. Uh, most labs use 30 to 100 as a normal range. I recommend being above 50 to 70. The last time I was checked, I was that close to being over 100. I was like at 95 or something like that. Um, I recommend taking 5,000 international units a day when you're well. I'm fine. I don't have any health problems whatsoever. Take 5,000. Now, I, I took this amount, um, and occasionally when I had some troubles went up above this, and I ended up um, close to 100. I wasn't overdosing, but I was close to 100. I have other patients who've taken this amount, and they can't seem to keep their vitamin D level above this level. So it's really important that you get blood tested. If you're sick, if you have symptoms of infection, take 20,000 IU a day. Now, if you take this on a regular basis for long term, you're going to overdose, it's very likely. Uh, so be sure that you only take this while you're symptomatic and again, get your blood tested. If you're plagued with health issues and you don't seem to be able to get over them, feel free to email me um, at drmasters at accusmart.com. I'd be happy to set up a time to talk to you on the phone and discuss what we might be able to do to help. I consult with people with lots of different kinds of health problems. I hope this video was helpful and um, look uh, in the description for more information.